All right, friends, greetings of the day. Uh, let's start with today's topic that we have just completed in our previous lecture. But before going to that previous lecture, I just want to recapitulate and want to give you one to more information. Okay, so the first of all, when we have started, we have talked about the number of elements. You know, on the basis of number of elements, we have been classified our metals, non-metals, and metalloids. And I have told you that in actual, there are almost one, one, four elements. But the point is this number of elements is variable. I have told you that we have been still discovering many more elements, okay? Like there are some radioactive elements, jo, uh, man -made hai, hai, jo hum aaj bhi discover kar hai, to just gather more and more information, okay? So this particular number is quite variable. It keeps changing. Till now, I think there is almost 120 elements that we know very well. But out of those 120 elements, those uh, 120 elements, we do not have the each information about all and every element. So in actual, this number has been changed now from 114 to 118, okay? And this particular topic, the number of elements and their classification that you would study in the same class in the fifth chapter. The fifth chapter is totally dependent upon the number of elements in their classification that whether they are metal, whether they are non-metal, whether they are metalloids, or what are their physical properties, okay? So this is the topic we will study in the same chapter. I just wanted to give you the information that right now we have been discussing the number of elements with 118, okay? So please keep that in your mind. Now let's move to the topic what we have studied in our previous lectures. In our previous lectures, we have just completed the physical properties of metal and non-metal, and we have taken one chemical property of metal. And now, so let's move with the chemical properties of metal. Now, in the chemical properties of metal, what we have studied, the first one was when the metal is burnt in oxygen or what happened when the metal is kept into the air. So the point is, we have studied this little bit, that whenever my metal is put into the oxygen, it forms metal oxide. That is, metal is getting reacted with oxygen and it would form metal oxide. And we have seen from an example like copper is reacting with oxygen and it would make copper oxide. Aluminium with oxygen would make aluminium oxide. And aluminium oxide is also known to be amphoteric oxide. That is, it can react with acid as well as base. Okay, this is what we have already studied. Now, in the same topic, we have uh, to understand so many information. So let's move to the next topic. That is, the topic is what happens when the oxide are reacted with water. See, as I have already told, that the property of each metal is variable. It would change from one metal to another metal. For example, I have talked about the copper. Copper is known to be copper oxide, but aluminum is known to be amphoteric oxide. Yani acid or base dono ke saath kar sakta so we have so many different variations in the reactivity of metal. So most of the metal oxide are not soluble in water, but a few of them can be dissolved into water and they would make our alkaline solution. They would make our basic solution. Suppose I'm taking example of sodium. Okay, so what would happen? Let I would take the sodium is reacting with oxygen. It would make sodium oxide. Or if I'm talking about potassium, whenever it is reacting with oxygen, it would make potassium oxide. So whenever these oxide, like sodium oxide, has been dissolved into water, it would make a new it, the basic. Same as it is potassium oxide plus water, it would make QH. And in the very previous chapter, we have studied about acid and base. So NUH and QOH, they both are very strong base. So I can say a few metals like sodium and potassium, whenever they would dissolve into water, they would produce a strong base. Or this is the reason we also call them alkali metal. Sodium and potassium, they are known to be alkali metal. Okay, about the alkali metal, you will also see in the fifth chapter. 
So I just wanted to say that whenever we react our two metals like sodium and potassium, there are only a few metals which on dissolving with water will produce base. Okay, not every metal do the same thing. All right, so this was the point I wanted to share with you. Next, the case when metal is burnt in oxygen. I have taken just few example like copper, aluminum, sodium, potassium. Now what's actually happening, what's actually happening when we are getting reacted with some different metals. Okay, let's move to our next topic. Okay, the first point uh, I have told you, I have understood that all my metals do not react with oxygen at the same reactivity. They do not react at the same reactivity. For example, if I'm talking about my sodium and potassium, my sodium and potassium, they are so much reactive that whenever I just put them into air, they would catch the fire. I have named the topic when they are burnt in the oxygen. But sodium or potassium, they are super reactive. They are itna reactive that whenever I just put them into air, they would automatically catch the fire. Okay, so this is the first point which is very important. I think, I hope you have seen in some magic shows or in TV shows that we just put some wood over there. And uh, after that, that we would show that without any matchstick, without any fire, there is burning a fire. That magic is due to sodium and potassium. These are super reacting metal and they can easily catch the fire without even burning them. Okay. So the point is whenever we would use them in laboratory, what would happen? They would catch the fire. And there would be get uh, there would be some laboratory accident. So to avoid these circumstances, we just put the sodium and potassium particularly in kerosene oil. In kerosene oil, we always put them in kerosene oil so that in kerosene oil there would be a layer of oil over them and the oxygen would directly not contact with them. Suppose this is my sodium and metal. Suppose this is my sodium and metal. And I have put oil over it, the kerosene oil. So the oxygen would not react with direct to it because it has to first go through the kerosene oil. Okay? So this is the most important point, Bacche. The sodium and potassium catch fire. So we have to put them into kerosene oil. Okay? Very important question. Now let's move to our next topic. Suppose if I'm talking about by aluminium or uh, magnesium. Aluminium and magnesium, uh, aluminum do not burn whenever I put them into oxygen. In fact, it would make a layer of aluminum oxide. It would make a layer of aluminum oxide. That I have already told you, the aluminum oxide on reacting with aluminum would make aluminum oxide. Yeah. So whenever aluminum react with oxygen, a black layer of aluminum oxide would be formed over it. That is known to be anodizing. That property is known to be anodizing. Okay. And the benefit of this property is that it would help aluminum to protect it from corrosion. Have you heard about the corrosion? Corrosion is the term which is known to be junk. Aapne Hindi mein suna hoga that junk lag gaya. The iron has been rusted out. The same as it is, corrosion means, which is something which uh, deteriorates or I can say it's uh, decreasing the tendency of being a metal. Okay. But aluminum ka ye benefit hai that whenever it reacts with oxygen, a black layer would uh, cover its surface and it would make it further applicable or further resistant to corrosion. Okay. So that's the benefit of aluminum. Magnesium do not react with oxygen very strongly, it, it would, uh, if it would react, there would be very low chances, okay? Same as it is, I'm talking about copper and many more things. So now, a point has been kept in your mind, a point click karna ji aap logo ke mind mein, that there is something that reactivity is different of each metal. If I'm talking about copper, that is burning. If I'm talking about sodium potassium, they are super reactive, they are burning without even um, giving them some fire. Aluminium is not burning, it's just making a layer. Magnesium is not burning, magnesium is not reacting at all. So I just want to say that there are so variations this that we have to know somewhat some new topic about reactivity. 
दैट मीन्स हम अपने डिफरेंट मेटल्स को रिएक्टिविटी के बेस पे अरेन्ज कर सकते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव टुक सो मेनी एग्जाम्पल्स ओके सो दिस इज आर न्यू टॉपिक द रिएक्टिविटी सीरीज बट द पॉइंट इज सिर्फ ऑक्सीजन के साथ रिएक्शन को देख के हम नहीं बना सकते we have to first check out some two or three more chemical properties and then on the basis of them we would make what actually a reactivity series is okay so let's move to our next chemical property of metal chemical property of metal number 2 in this property we have just taken how it is reacting with oxygen now in the second property i'm showing you what would happen if they are reacting with water okay what would happen if they are reacting with water so let's see the first point the reaction of metal with water okay पहला बच्चे अगर मैं अपनी मेटल को वोटर के साथ रिएक्ट कराना चाह रही हूँ तो वट वुड हैपन इट वुड डेफिनेटली मेक अ मेटल ऑक्साइड बट विद रिलीज ऑफ हाइड्रोजन गैस दैट मीन्स द रिएक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस द मेटल हैज बीन कन्वर्टेड टू मेटल ऑक्साइड बट द पॉइंट इज द हाइड्रोजन गैस इज ऑल्सो गेटिंग रिलीज एज वेल ओके बट अनदर पॉइंट इज if i would dissolve my metal oxide into water it would make metal hydroxide it would make metal hydroxide that is moh okay so let's see let's start with our first example of metal let we have the example of yes potassium and sodium whenever i am reacting by sodium as well as potassium with water what would happen they would release they would make some oxide like this but hydrogen gas is also getting released okay same as it is if i am taking example of um copper with water it would make cuprous oxide plus hydrogen gas if i'm taking about aluminium plus water it would make aluminium oxide with hydrogen gas so it is almost same to that previous topic whenever we have reacted our metal with oxygen only this is almost the same topic the only difference is on that case hydrogen was not getting released but whenever i am reacting my metal with water hydrogen gas is getting released okay so these are some examples these are some few topics which would elaborate you how metal is getting reacted with water let me show you some more examples okay the point is whenever calcium is reacting with water whenever the calcium is getting reacted with water it would make calcium hydroxide plus h2 gas and the best point is my calcium would start floating that if i want to dissolve my more calcium into water it would start floating due to those hydrogen gas bubbles yani in that solution there would be so many bubbles of hydrogen gas that my calcium would start floating over it it would start uh, swimming over it rather than being much dissolved okay so this was all about this topic now let's we need to move our next topic that is what happens when metal react with acid what happens when we react our metal with acid reaction of metal with acid okay just give me a second whenever we want to react our metal with acid what would happen there would be formation of some salt with some hydrogen 
like i'm taking metal plus any kind of acid it would make metal salt plus hydrogen now see the what's the difference between this topic whenever we react our metal with acid what's actually happen the concentration of acid would lead to a very great topic that is concentrated acid or the dilute acid our metal do not react with concentrated acid in fact they would react with dilute acid and i hope you have heard in our previous class whenever we have studied acid and base that dilute acid is something in which we dissolve our acid into water we have added acid into water so what would happen the ions of acid would be decreased down the ions of acid would be lower down and due to increase much water into it it has become diluted that means jo h positive ion concentration hai that has been a very low whenever i have dissolved my acid into water okay so i would like to say that my metal would react with dilute acid and would make salt and hydrogen rather than the concentrated okay but there are some metals also as i have already told exceptions are everywhere and the reactivity is somewhat which is dependent on each metal from one metal to different metal whenever we go from one metal to another metal the reactivity always keeps on changing so there are some metals which do not react with dilute acid in fact we have to give them concentrated acid for example uh, there is silver silver react with concentrated hcl and it would make silver chloride plus h2 it would not react with dilute hcl it would further react with concentrated hcl because silver gold and copper these are some metals which are much less reactive okay agar main baat karu sodium ki potassium ki they are so much high reactive that they would easily react with the dilute acid i would say a uh, sodium potassium they would react with dilute acid rather than the concentrated and easily make some salt and hydrogen like nacl plus h2 gas kcl plus h2 gas na plus dilute hcl would give you nacl plus h2 k plus hcl would give you kcl plus h2 and many more okay but some metals like silver copper they would react with concentrated because they are less reactive another point is the gold gold is something which do not react with concentrated hcl or concentrated nitric acid तो पॉइंट हेयर इज कि अगर मुझे अपने गोल्ड को रिएक्ट कराना है तो व्हाट वुड वी डू वी वुड मेक एक्वा रिजिया वी वुड मेक एक्वा रिजिया एक्वा रिजिया इज अ मिक्सचर ऑफ टू स्ट्रॉन्ग एसिड दैट इज कंसंट्रेटेड हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड एंड कंसंट्रेटेड नाइट्रिक एसिड कंसंट्रेटेड एच सी एल प्लस कंसंट्रेटेड नाइट्रिक एसिड in the ratio of 3 is to 1 that means agar mujhe apna 4 ml solution banana hai to main kya karungi 3 ml concentrated hcl add karungi aur 1 ml concentrated nitric acid add karungi okay to agar mere paas itna strong solution prepare hua hai jiske andar itna sara strong uh, concentrated hcl or concentrated nitric acid hai this is known to be aqua regia and gold only dissolve in aqua regia agar main gold ko concentrated hcl mein dalungi it would not react agar main gold ko concentrated nitric acid mein dalungi it would not react it only react in this aqua regia solution okay au would react with it only and it would just dissolve down dissolve to it and settle down okay hydrogen gas would be released definitely but it would be settled down as a salt okay so this was the topic i want to share with you what would happen if i would react my metal with acid we have made some example like sodium potassium and then we are going to react with dilute acid and concentrated acid and finally we have studied about aqua regia okay so let's move to our next topic
the next topic is what would happen when a metal is reacted with another metal salt reaction of metal with another metal salt okay but say for this topic reaction of metal with another metal salt i would try to leave you in the first chapter in first chapter you have studied displacement reaction hai dhyan we have studied displacement reaction what the displacement reaction has taught us we have understood in displacement reaction that our a one metal has been replaced by replaced by another metals a uh, salt suppose i'm taking metal a plus salt of metal b what would happen salt of metal a would be formed plus b for example zinc plus copper sulfate if i am replacing my zinc and copper like zinc sulfate plus copper this was known to be displacement reaction so whenever a reaction of metal is taking place with another metal salt it can easily displace it but the point here is it can only displace on the basis of reactivity that means a high reactive metal a high reactive metal would displace would displace less reactive metal would displace less reactive metal तो यहां से हमें क्या पता चला कि माई जिंक इज मच रिएक्टिव देन कोपर दैट्स वाई जिंक कैन इजिली डिस्प्लेस द कोपर फॉर्म ओके सो दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट पॉइंट आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर विद यू द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज आई हैव शोन यू सो मेनी एग्जाम्पल सो मेनी रिएक्शन लाइक मेटल विद ऑक्सीजन मेटल विद वोटर मेटल विद अनदर मेटल सोल्ट और मेटल विद एसिड एंड फ्रॉम ऑल दिस ऑब्जर्वेशन वी कैन से द रिएक्टिविटी ऑफ मेटल always keep changing and we can put them in a form of reactivity series in which our metals have been arranged in the form of increasing or decreasing reactivity okay so we have been putting a reactivity series on the basis of displacement reaction displacement reaction aapko clear kar diya hoga ki ek reactive metal jo hai wo kam reactive metal ko bahut easily displace kar sakti hai so we have to keep in our mind what is the actual reactivity series what is the actual reactivity order of different metals okay so our next topic is the reactivity series all right bachche let's move to the reactivity series i have just told you reactivity series is something a series of arranging metals in the form of decreasing reactivity in the form of decreasing reactivity that means i if i have made a series in the form of decreasing reactivity the metal which is present on the top is most reactive and the metal which is at the lowest that is the least reactive okay so uh, the actual reactivity series is सबसे पहले आता है सोडियम सॉरी पोटेशियम सोडियम बेरियम कैल्शियम मैग्नीशियम एल्यूमिनियम लिथियम जिंक आयरन कॉपर सिल्वर एंड गोल्ड अभी तक 
यू हैव टेकन सो मेनी एग्जाम्पल सो मेनी सीरीज वहां से इतना तो क्लियर हो गया होगा कि हमारा जो सोडियम और पोटेशियम है दे आर द मोस्ट रिएक्टिव मेटल दे आर द मोस्ट रिएक्टिव मेटल एंड माई सिल्वर एंड कोपर एज वेल एज माई गोल्ड ऑल्सो सिल्वर कोपर एंड गोल्ड दीज आर द लीस्ट रिएक्टिव मेटल सो बच्चे विद ऑल दीज ऑब्जर्वेशन जैसे मैंने ऑक्सीजन का एग्जाम्पल दिया था जैसे मैंने एच सी एल का एग्जाम्पल दिया था वी हैव ऑब्जर्व दैट दीज टू थ्री टर्म्स दीज टू थ्री मेटल्स आर मोस्ट रिएक्टिव रेदर देन दीज टू थ्री टर्म्स लाइक सिल्वर गोल्ड एंड कॉपर विच इज विच इज द लीस्ट रिएक्टिव द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज यू हैव टू कीप दैट सीरीज इन योर माइंड दैट वट इज एक्चुअल रिएक्टिविटी सीरीज ओके बट इसमें से ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट हमारे लिए क्या है सोडियम पोटेशियम मैग्नीशियम आयरन एंड दीज तो ये आपको आई होपफुली याद हो जाएगा और अगर नहीं याद होता है तो वी हैव अ वेरी शॉर्टकट अ वेरी सिंपल मेथड दैट इज आई हैव रिमेम्बर दिस बाय केना बासा मिगली देन जिनफी देन वी हैव सन पीवी and age a this is nothing ye hamare jo sodium potassium calcium magnesium we have put them in the form of their uh, we can say symbol like sodium potassium kena the k and a basa that is b a c a migli zinfi and finally sun pb uh, copper and age a okay so i just want to say you you have to keep in your mind that sodium potassium are the most reactive magnesium iron and zinc they are the, the they would be found in the middle of reactivity series so if i would take an example like magnesium plus iron sulfate would it replace yes definitely it is highly reactive so uh, the reaction would not take place because iron cannot replace it but magnesium would easily replace it by magnesium sulfate plus iron okay so this was i wanted to share with you that on the basis of reactivity series we can easily check out the displacement reaction plus we can uh, also solve our query that why sodium potassium are so much reactive than silver gold and copper why silver gold copper just react in aqua regia rather than in normal acid okay so this was all about the reactivity series and till now we have completed our topic that is uh, chemical reaction of metals we have just finished the chemical reaction of metals we have total four to five different chemical reaction so please make uh, complete notes and try to solve the intex question okay so this was all about by my side class now if there is any kind of doubt or query in this particular topic you can ask to me i'm okay.